Welcome to MRTV's People in XR. This is the podcast that introduces you to the most exciting players in the industry. And here is your host, Sebastian Ong. In this episode of the People in XR podcast, it's my utmost pleasure to say hello to Kyle Riesenbeck or Reverend Kyle Riesenbeck. I'm not exactly sure. Either way. <laughs> Either way. Yeah. Awesome. Kyle, you are the editor in chief of Upload VR. Mm -hmm. That's so, great. Thank you so much for your time. I understand you're a very busy man and we are during GDC, so it's amazing that you take this one hour probably for this podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing great, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, anytime somebody's doing new content uh, in this industry, I want to support that. Oh, thank you, so, man. Yeah. Thank you. And um, directly in the beginning of this podcast, I can tell you that, uh, yeah, I'm really inspired by your podcast. So you are like the original VR, AR um, podcaster. Could, you, could I say like could I say you know, that? I, I wouldn't say I don't know about original. Uh, you know, I got my inspiration to do the Rev VR podcast as Reverend Kyle by a podcast that was posted in the Oculus subreddit. All right, many many moons ago, okay. there, there was a few guys <laughs> that got together and did a podcast, and it was a one shot, one hit podcast pre DK one. Okay. And then they never did another one. Right. And so being a part of that community, I said, is there room for <laughs> like, is there a demand for this kind right. of content? And people were like, yeah, sure. So I started reaching out to people that I, you know, friends, VR peeps, <laughs> uh, you know, OG people, th right. people have been around for a while. And I said, hey, you know, come talk to me for an hour or so. And let's just let's just chat. And, and they did. <laughs> they did. They did. Now, uh, there were other podcasts that were starting at that same time. So uh, Chris Miranda was doing Enter VR. And uh, he and I go back and forth on which one of us did our first. podcast first. <laughs> he... Uh, he technically recorded his first one first. Okay, but you published. But I one? published okay. first. So, so what counts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then there's uh, and then there's Kent By who does Voices of VR. Right. Um, I actually met him at SVVR, uh, the very first one, mm -hmm. and it's great. He had a, a sheet like a hit list of all the people he was going to interview, <laughs> and that's yeah. what I'm doing right now as well. Yeah, is that, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Upload VR. <laughs> Strike. I got him. <laughs> right. Right. There you no, go. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely one of the first or the first VR podcast people will fight over this <laughs> but um, <laughs> definitely great to have you on the show sure. so so now Reverend Kyle Riesenbeck or Kyle Riesenbeck what is that so, thing about Reverend so tell, tell us about it, it, it it's, it's a fun story and I get that question a lot people always I, ask me are you real Reverend <laughs> It would be my it, question. Yeah. The answer is yes. I am an ordained minister in the great state of Ohio. Uh, a friend of mine was getting married and mm -hmm. wanted me to perform the ceremony. Yeah. So cool. I got ordained, ten dollars and registration with uh, you know the state of Ohio, and I got a certificate. I can perform weddings. Uh, that that wedding never happened. <laughs> Really? But yeah, but uh, right around the same time that that was happening, uh, I was getting into the uh, Android kind of ROM hacking and, you know, uh, I don't want to say jailbreaking, but that's mm -hmm. basically what it was, is rooting. Cyan cyanogen. Cyanogen, yeah, yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah okay, I, cool. I was really big the into best that. best mods. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Uh, and I got into that, and I was... Uh, I was looking for a YouTube video channel that would show how to do a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff. I couldn't find it. All right. So I went, hmm, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. So I started doing it. And, and somebody told me once, like, you need to have a name, a moniker, <laughs> something that people will remember. Right. And I went, I could be. Reverend Kyle, your <laughs> minister of mobile devices. And I rolled with it and people loved it. Yeah, and cool. yeah, it, it was really, it's one of those things, you know, I never had a nickname growing up, or at mm -hmm. least not one that people said to my face. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. yeah, it, yeah, it was, it was, it was fun to have a, a name, a title, you know, something that people knew me by. Cause without that, I was just another Kyle guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like all these Kyles. Uh, yeah. So I kind of stuck with it. I mean, people call me Rev, people call me Rev Kyle. People call okay. me, you know, like my dad always said, call me anything you want, just don't call me late for dinner. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, so cool. So um, it came from this um, Cyanogen mod thing, mm -hmm. and it carried over to VR. It did. It so, did. so when you started the VR podcast, mm -hmm. um, did you make a decision like, okay, should I keep it now, or should I find a new VR name? Yeah. Do you, have, do you it, think about that? It, it's interesting. People who have followed my stuff for a while remember that uh, it was originally called Rev TV. Right. And 
And so kind of like MRD. Yeah, MRD. Like, hey, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's a, a great good, concept. It's a good concept. It is. It is. Uh, and so I had, a, uh, I had an Android uh, robot, and it had um, it had a halo and wings. And then I put a VR headset on it right, and right. VR on his chest. And, and that became my logo. And I had that for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Rev VR podcast. Now, somebody asked me once, like, well, what are you going to do about AR? Are you going to do Rev <laughs> AR? Man? It's like, I don't know. Oh, Rev know. XR, come on. Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. XR. I, 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 I maintained the Reverend Kyle moniker because it was just me. I was my own brand. Right. I didn't have to worry about representing anybody. It was just me. Cool. So when I uh, got the gig as editor-in-chief at Upload VR, I, I, I kind of talked to the team and I said, you know, I'll, I'll drop the, the Reverend, right. you know, and get a little bit more of serious, a professional. Yeah, yeah no, you know. Now we're getting serious here at Upload. Right, right. You know, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> is, you know, I don't want to be like that. I, I want it to be serious. So so I've slowly faced that. But, I mean, even just today, I've had five or six people come up. Hey, Rev. Hey, yeah. what's going on? I still answer to it. I, I still love it. It's okay. just that from my professional capacity, okay. I... Kyle Reason back. Yes, absolutely. Editor in chief at Upload VR. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, good. Good. Now we know exactly what's up with the Reverend. There you go. Right. So now, well... Upload VR mm -hmm. is one of the most successful and biggest um, publications in VR. Yes. And you being the editor-in-chief of that makes mm -hmm. you one of the most influential people in VR. Oh, wow. Will you say that? You're putting a lot of pressure on me, man. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, the, the Upload VR team has uh, consistently done a good job of... Uh, getting to the news, reporting the news, uh, you know, trying to break things as they come down. I mean, uh, the the entire Upload team, we're, we're really passionate. This isn't just a job. This is our passion. We're really passionate about it. So when we see things and hear things, we have epic conversations, you know, unreal conversation, unity conversation. See, that's, that's yeah. my, that's my joke. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I get it. I think we all get it. Here. Yeah. We are all. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, when you're really passionate about it and news breaks, it's exciting. Right. It's not a, Oh, we have to write an article on this now. Right, or, right. Oh, I guess we should write. No, we want to legit write about the things we're passionate about and i think that i think you can tell when you read the stuff on upload that there's there's heart and soul in it it's not mechanical it's not you know ai didn't get programmed to pump out these articles mm -hmm. this this is this right. is real stuff right yeah and uh, well i believe that's also part why this industry is so exciting because people like us we are so excited about it right mm -hmm. like most of us oh yeah right oh yeah it's just like uh, it feels we are in the beginning of some, something special and we know yes right? Right? yes and we need to tell everyone uh -huh. and that's why we're doing that you know for years i thought I, I you know i grew up reading books about like you know the hackers in the right. 80s and steve jobs and bill gates and right. paul allen and all these people and yeah. You know, I always thought, man, if I had just been born 10 years earlier, I could have been part of this. Right. But, you know, and especially growing up in the Midwest, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, which is, you know, cornfields, not necessarily a tech hub. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong. Right. I love Ohio, but it's just not I felt like there was something outside okay. that I needed to get to. And right. uh, I eventually moved my family out to, to Seattle. But, um, you know. I used to think I was born too late. Now I think I was born just in time, right. you know, to get into this right now when, when, it, when it's hot. And I really do feel very fortunate, very blessed that, uh, you know, when, when Oculus talked at, at Oculus Connect 5 about the, the 50 people who had been to all, I've been to every OC. I've been to every cool. Connect, you know, and I've and I've been to SVVR expos and all the other things that I think are important for people in the VR space to go to. I've been to those, and and for that I'm I feel very fortunate. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah it's a great time to be alive right now. Yes, it's, it is. It's just so exciting. Cool. So um, I want to talk a bit more about upload VR. Sure. So. Um, we're going to talk about more later, like how you got into that position. Mm -hmm. But um, for those of um, our listeners and viewers who are not so familiar with the publication, but I believe they all are. But yeah, I mean, you should know. I mean, come, come on. on, yeah. Come if you're on. listening to this podcast, yeah, you, then... you know, you should know <laughs> right. this stuff. But anyways, <laughs> still, I want to give like a little primer. So there sure. are not so many publications, right? There's, mm -hmm. I, I would say, like 
the two, no, the three biggest ones are definitely um, Upload VR, mm -hmm. Road to VR, yep. and MRTV. <laughs> no, uh, that, unfortunately, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like this in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but um, right, it's Upload VR and Road to VR. I think this, the strongest ones, which are yeah, people like going to. There are other sure. two great ones, VR Focus and others, mm -hmm. which are really good. And VR Scout. And, yeah, and VR Scout. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, other there, good ones. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So there, but it's like. Um, in one hand, you can find them all. <laughs> yeah, right, it's, right. It's really not so many. Yeah. So um, tell us a bit more, like, what Upload VR is doing mm -hmm. and, um, like, how about your team? How many people? Sure, are, sure. We are uh, currently uh, uh, six people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, have, we have two senior writers that have been around for a long time. They're, they're OGs, you know, right, they, they, right. they understand the industry. And then we've got uh, another guy who's been around pretty long, too, and he's, he's really good. Uh, and then we've uh, added some new people mm -hmm. uh, since I came on board. And uh, it's I feel like right now the team is we have that little bit of expertise in each category. You know, mm -hmm. some folks that are really good with games, others that are good in hardware, others that are good in, um, you know, digging in deep into code and stuff like that. And, okay. you know, it, and it takes a, a level of dynamics for that team to work right. uh, efficiently and well and to be, you know, going in the right direction. So we, we try to do everything very democratically. You know, if it's like, oh, we should write about this. Well, Let's talk about this first. You know, right. it's like, is this really news? You know, we don't want to be clickbaity. We don't want to, because that, that's that's a word. That click clickbait. Uh, it, running <laughs> running a news outlet. It's one of those things that where you're really nervous about. If I run this, what's the what what is the community going to say about this particular article? And right. you know, the the whole concept of wow, you turned a whole article. You 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 wrote a whole article from a tweet or a Reddit post, or a this. And it's like sometimes we want everybody to know it exists. And in, other than just putting a link to it in Twitter, it's like how else do you get, and maybe some explanation is needed and things like that. Uh, you know, we, we, we try to avoid the smaller articles and give more in depth, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I mean, if you're a, you know, if you're a, the, the type of person that reads your, your news in the morning over a bowl of cornflakes and a cup of coffee, you don't necessarily want to read you know, Herman Melville, Moby Dick kind of thing. You just want right. to get the, the nitty gritty and move on to the next article. So we, we try really hard to balance that out. Um, you know, another thing, too, is that we know that as the industry adjusts, that we need to adjust what we cover and how we cover it. And so you may be in the future seeing more uh, multimedia type of content coming out of Upload. Uh, we have been doing a lot more streaming on Twitch. So go check out our Twitch channel. It's really cool. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I haven't been doing the Rev VR podcast since I've taken this gig. Uh, I think that allows me the opportunity to maybe do an upload branded oh, podcast right. down Something the road. Be coming up here. So you never know. <laughs> you never know. You might see that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, as the industry grows, we'll grow. I mean, that, yeah, that's that's what we have to do. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Cool. So six people working this, you are in the lead position, mm -hmm. I would say. And um, um, are you all um, located in one place or are you distributed? How do you work together? This is the beauty of our team mm -hmm. is that we are all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so we've got two folks in the UK. We've got uh, a couple people in California. I'm up in Seattle, Washington. And so we just kind of spread out and go where we need to go. And there is no centralized building. There's not, you know, uh, previous um, uh iterations of upload there have been like shared workspaces and incubator type of thing it, none of that exists anymore it's all gone all we are is we're six people working from an office at home and you know spending a large amount of time on slack chatting back and forth so right, right. <laughs> then probably at these kind of events you will meet each other yeah like, oh, hey, yeah. oh yeah that's mm -hmm. you right oh we're working together <laughs> absolutely yeah every time we get together it's like a little family reunion cool yeah. very cool mm -hmm. so um since you are the boss how are you leading your team? Are you like the tight ship guy or is it like you want to empower them? Tell us a bit more about your working style. I believe that a good manager doesn't manage people. They manage processes. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, manage the processes, lead the people. That, that, that's my mm -hmm. mantra. I've had years of experience with management. I've actually even taught some classes on proper management. Uh, I, I, I like to remove obstacles. That, that's my biggest uh, claim is, you know, 
if you have a problem, bring it to me. Well, let's find a way around it. Mm -hmm. Whatever I can do to make your life easier, that's what we do. And I really believe in a good quality of life and and a work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, some of us have kids, wives, husbands, whatever. I mean, we we need to be able to make sure we're happy. And and that's uh, happy, happy workers make you know Happy better audience. work yeah they, they make better content so All right. I, I i really feel like that's um that's important to me because everybody could you can ask anybody on the planet and say tell me a horror story about an old boss oh oh yeah well here's this and that i, I don't want people to have that right. about me okay. you know okay <laughs> Let's yeah. find out later then. Yeah. What's gonna right, exactly. <laughs> later knows? on, it's like, oh, yeah, he oh, was a terrible man. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was, that was crazy. Okay, yeah. right. So you try to enable them in doing what they're doing, those Absolutely. those guys. Yep. Cool, yep. exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, um, how does it work? So let's say uh, David comes up with a, with an idea for an article and he asks you first or he just keep he just writes it and then he shows it to you could you tell us about yeah, the process you know there, there's so many different processes and it, you know uh, depending on who it is that's writing what the subject is uh a lot of it is just automated it's mm -hmm. okay you know this article was written edited and published before i even woke up in the morning <laughs> okay. and, you know sometimes right. i can afford to do that other times it's like oh i need a second set of eyes on okay. this i need a third everybody read this you know we had an right. article go out the other day four people looked at it nobody caught a spelling error a typo. Mm -hmm. Nobody caught it. Four people looked at it. Nobody caught it. It happens, you know? And then I get a, you know, an instant message from somebody, oh, you got a typo in that first sentence. <laughs> oh, how did we all miss that? <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Right, Nobody's perfect, you know? And we, we really try to, you know, self-correct. And um, But no, a lot of times uh, the, the Slack will have a whole bunch of, you know, people are like, oh, here's something I caught here. Or here's a patent we found, or here's a, a tweet. What does this mean? You know, and here's a, an email we got or an embargo that's coming up soon. We, you know, we just kind of, we use industry standard tools, Slack, Trello, right. you know, that sort of thing. And we just, you know, one thing I don't do is I don't assign stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't hand it out like, okay, you're doing this article. You're doing this article. The team already knows what, they're good at mm -hmm. and what they can write. And if, if somebody says, Hey, I'm kind of slammed. Can you write this one? Or, mm -hmm. Hey, why don't you write that? Yeah, they, they all work together and it, it just really works out nicely. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. to know. So in this industry, somehow we are all startups, right? We're sure. still all startups. Like I'm a startup, like upload VR is a mm -hmm. startup. And, um, of course we always are faced with the question, how can we sustain ourselves? Right. right. That's that's an important question. Absolutely. So um, with Upload VR, before um, Upload VR was doing uh, like a co-working space and like education, all kind of thing that was yeah. before your time, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. So um, um, you took the helm of this in uh, end of um, 2018, or around well, what time was it? Okay. Um, so somewhere around March, the uh, the investors of OG upload right. uh, said, let's take the publication, which has always kind of functioned as its own independent entity, and let's just rip it out and stick it over here with its own funding and let it do its thing. Okay. And then let all the rest of this upload stuff kind of do whatever it's going to do, implode, right. explode, <laughs> you know, just fade off into the distance. I don't know. Uh, but it... It, it was nice to be able to see that that was its own independent. Mm -hmm. None of these people that were part of the publication had any interaction really or any involvement with what was happening at the workspaces or mm -hmm. all, all this other stuff. And so I, I kind of felt like it was nice that they got to have their own little little corner to sit in. Um, when they approached me, it was a, it was a conversation, took almost a month and um i it was right before oculus connect 5 when they offered me the role and uh so i kind of soft announced it at oc5 you know we re, we put out a uh, an article and i mean it was yeah it was a, a shock to some confusing to others uh, other people were like yay you know, those are the people i talk to more often it was the yays <laughs> but uh yeah it just it just kind of happened and you know it, it was a 
I had been in the development field. I had been developing for uh, several different consultancy companies and, and, you know, made a lot of stuff in the enterprise field, architectural visualization, uh, corporate training stuff, that kind of thing. I, I'm not a, an amazing developer. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just an okay developer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like... Um, because of the work I was doing, I wasn't doing as much of my podcast and fans of my show will know it kind of tapered as mm-hmm. things went along and it just, again, work-life balance. So when they came to me and they said, you know, Hey, you know, come run up love. And I'm like, Hmm, I could get back into the roots, the nitty gritty of being part of the VR community without having to stress over why my, you know, I keep getting runtime errors or my code keeps <laughs> taking a crap. And it's like, yeah, okay, well, uh, yeah, sure, I'll do that. I, yeah. I can do that for a little while and see what happens. And so far, I've been very happy. Uh, it's been really successful. And, yeah, I mean, upload upload, upload feels like one of those nice cardigan sweaters that you put on. You're like, mm, I'm warm, you know. Feels good. Cool. Feels good. I can totally relate to that runtime thing because I was a developer too. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> So yeah. totally get you. Uh, <laughs> prefer what we're doing right now. It's good. Absolutely. Perfect. So like a complete um, fresh slate with Apple VR, a new start. Mm-hmm. After there were problems with what it was going on before, a new slate with with uh, Kyle Riesenbeck at Apple VR, a new start. Amazing. That is really cool. So um, I was still going into that um, startup um, thing. So you have... Um, of course, you have like investors, correct? Right. So you you, you do have some uh, some money from that. But um, are you revenue positive at Upload VR with what you're doing right now? If I can ask this question, it, it, <laughs> it's it's a struggle because um, we're we're refining some things right now that maybe weren't necessarily heading in the right direction. Um, there were some things that were being. Uh, we're kind of revamping everything in terms of our budget and stuff like that. So right now it's kind of a weird gray area to be in. Uh, But I mean, we've got enough of a runway. I think our investors understand that uh, this, the potential for reporting on this industry is huge. Right. So, you know, the, the idea of being profitable versus staying afloat versus not eating spam and macaroni and cheese. It is very similar to being an indie dev and, you know, hold in there guys, indie devs, you know, the struggle is real. I feel the pain. Uh, you too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> TV, yeah. It's not easy. You know, and, and that's where you're, you're, you're paying for it with passion. Right. And that's really important to remember that these folks are doing it because they love it. And, you know, their blood, sweat and tears are in these titles, these games, these experiences, these podcasts, these videos, <laughs> right. it, it's in there. And so, uh, you know, up- upload right now is, is, uh, is stable and is moving in the right direction in terms of that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't see us going away anytime soon. Cool. <laughs> yeah, great. Same here with MRTV. So that's, one thing that I hear over and over that we're in this industry right now and we just need to stay afloat, stay yeah. alive for the next, I don't know, three, four years mm-hmm. when this is really big yep. and then we'll be there. Right? That's, is it like this? That's the goal. That's the goal of us, right? That's the ambition. <laughs> I don't know if it'll actually work out like that. Um, you know, it, it's it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? right. Especially with a new industry. I mean, I, it, if you ever get a chance to try to interview somebody from the '90s VR mm-hmm. people, yes, you know I've run into several of these people who've been around since the '90s. You know the virtuality and VPL yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, Jaron Lanier. And right. You, you, you talk to these folks, and they have a much different perspective on this new iteration and it's actually kind of novel and somewhat scary when I talk to them sometimes like, Oh no, Mm -hmm. no. But I I feel like all the advancements that have happened over the course of the last couple of years have really led us to a point where it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are some big players that are going to be doing some big things. And, um, you know, it's not just VR, it's AR, XR, MR, QR, PR, element of, yeah, I don't, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, uh, spatial computing, immersive technology, right. uh, it, we're, 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 a, we're a far distance away from being compared to 3D TVs, which oh, was course. something that I heard daily for a long time. Oh, it's going to die like 3D TVs. Yeah. Exactly. VR is dead, right? I, I mean, how often no. have we hear, heard that? Oh. It's, it's countless times. Right? You know, I have children at home, and uh, on any given day, 
I'll be down in my office. I'll be working. I'll come up for a drink or, you know, just to chat with the wife, whatever. There are the kids. I got one on a PSVR attached to the TV. The other one's on a laptop in, in a Windows MR headset. They're playing Rec Room with each other. Amazing, man. It, it's, it's, it's so good, right? The kids won't let this industry die. The right. kids won't let this. I mean, I, you know, depending on how old they are, your kid might be considered a VR native. Somebody who's grown up always not, not knowing a world without VR. Mm -hmm. That's important because... You know, uh, the whole concept of who's a millennial. Nobody wants to be one. Nobody wants to be one. But everybody's always quick to call somebody else a millennial. Uh, it's all a matter of you grew up analog. You live digital. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's how I categorize myself. Mm -hmm. I remember rotary phones and I have of a course. cell phone. Yeah, you know, of course, that's right. <laughs> like I can remember, like my first um, gaming console was an Atari VCS two thousand six hundred. Nice, right? It was nice. my first one, and I loved it. And yeah. probably you too. You I had, had, I, had a, I had a twenty six. I had an Atari twenty six hundred. Right. Uh, I used to play the tennis, uh, the Atari tennis, and I uh -huh. would hold one controller in each <laughs> hand, and I would play back and forth. It's like playing <laughs> pong with yourself. I'm like, okay. Uh, and then I got a seventy eight hundred pole position too. All oh, right. I loved oh, yes. pole position. Um, yeah, I could go on and on and yeah, on. Of but, course. Mm, yeah. It's been amazing, right? It and, has been. And, but it's unbelievable what we have now. Just think of it. Like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Cool. So, Upload VR, um, tell us a bit more about which content direction are you going. So, of course, it's been VR, VR, VR. Mm -hmm. Now, is it going to be more going to AR? Or are you just, are you just like flexible, whatever? hits the market first. You know, it, it's it's a conversation we have a lot uh, in, you know, just with other industry people and other news outlets. And then internally is, you know, do we get upload AR? Do we get upload XR? Do we get upload? Yeah. You know, if, if Google Glass came out right now, would we cover it? If, you know, it, the, the, there's this weird, it's a really weird gray area of what we cover, what we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, if it goes on your head, and you can see something, it kind of qualifies, you know? I, I love mean, that. I don't know how else to explain. That. Yeah. That, that seems to be the general consensus is if you put something on your head and you see something that you don't normally see, that that's what we're going to cover. I love it. I don't know what else that's, to say. No, no, that makes sense. No, that makes sense. And the same on MRTV. Put it yeah. on your head. Yeah, you see something? Okay, sure. I'm going to cover it. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Okay, everything that you're going to put on your head and you're going to see something, Upload VR is your place to go. Sure, I guess. Yeah, yeah right. That I mean, we, we do cover, um, you know, I, I've been working heavily on trying to get uh, some other categories of content. So in the past, uh, you know, people shy away from doing a lot of the, the 360 VR cameras, if you want to use that term. Uh you know, I, I've done photography for years and years, and I, I, I get all the hardware and the tech and stuff. So I've been trying to kind of build up a collection of articles and reviews on the cameras. So that way we can start adding that. Uh, I feel like enterprise is something where we could do more for enterprise. Uh, and then also VR is a global industry, and there's a lot of stuff going on in other countries that... It, they're not always reported on in the U.S. or in the U.K. And so, you know, wh where where is that content? Where where are the news outlets that are focusing on that? And so, I feel like there's definitely room for growth and potential to dig in more into some of these other parts of our industry. Wow, very interesting. Yeah, so probably in the future there's going to be the German version of Upload VR. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps right? Right, who, who knows? knows? Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Who knows? Cool. So now six people, and um, for Upload VR, do you want to grow the team in the foreseeable future, or do you think right now you're set it for, with this for the next one, two years? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I mean, we do use some freelancers on occasion, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we've got... Uh, we've got some, some regulars that we go to, uh, um, growing the team means having more content. So that sounds like a good idea, but if having more content doesn't lead to more revenue, right. then is it, you know, wh which do you do right. first? Do you wait until there's more revenue coming in then add more people or it's all about gamble. It's all about how safe do you want to be versus ambitious. And, um, I, I think there's a happy medium. So, I mean, right now we're, we're good with the six. Could we add more 
down the road, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> I that never makes know. makes sense, right? Yeah. I have to find the balance between. Absolutely. Between, mm -hmm. Right. Cool. Um, since we're so young in this industry and there's not so many media around with this, right? Mm -hmm. Just you can really um, count them in, on one hand. Right. I'm wondering how is the relationship between the publications? Like, uh, do you speak with the other guys? Oh, yeah. I, I, I totally hate oh. them all. No, I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, so back when I, I kind of in the thick of things, I think it was like episode 40 or 50 or something like that, uh, Ben Lang uh, at Road to VR approached me and sent me an email and said, Hey, you do good stuff. We do good stuff. Let's collaborate. And I'll, you know, put your podcast on our site and, you know, kind of share in each other's popularity. Uh, I did that for quite a while and, um, you know, it was a good relationship. I uh, worked well with Ben, attended stuff with him, built a rapport with Ben. Good guy. I right. really like him. Okay, good. Um, Then I left Road to VR to just try to kind of explore my options and see where else I can go. And now I'm in this role <laughs> at Upload, yeah, exactly. you know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Ben and I were just talking, you know, just Great. old friends. No, no, there's no, there's no animosity. And okay. uh, and you know, any level of competitive stuff is it's it's friendly competition okay, it's great. not you know I, i'm one of those guys who thinks that uh a rising tide raises all ships uh, somebody said that to me once early on when i first got started in vr and i went i like that yeah i'm gonna re i'm gonna repeat that every time i talk to somebody about this this concept we all want to succeed you right, know exactly. you can't only have coca-cola and not have pepsi mm -hmm. or rc or whatever Why can't they all be successful? Right. Why not both? You know, and uh, same thing with VR Focus, right. uh, VR Scout, uh, a great group of people, and MRTV. In MRTV, you know, everybody has their own um, uh, kind of a specialty. Uh, yeah, or a thing. I, like a, like a voice. They have a right. different voice, a different a different tone, mm -hmm. a different level of what they are focusing on, and that's great because then as a consumer, because I read VR news too. I don't mm -hmm. only read upload. I read <laughs> everybody's stuff. And there's a lot of other mainstream news media out outlets that are reporting on VR as well. Right. That's great. That's great. I read everything all the time. But cool. no, I'm not. I'm not afraid to click on a link of one of our competitors. <laughs> oh right. no! Yeah. No, it's, it's great that you say that, and it's cool that we are all in the same uh, mm -hmm. ship somehow, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and we all just want to succeed and have yep. VR and XR succeed, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. But if you have the scoop, then of course it feels good, right? Like with the Rift S, when you it said does. that, like the first, and then others like quoted you. It yeah. Felt good, right. <laughs> I, I, I love I love when that happens because right. I'll be um, my family and I like we love Jeopardy we're obsessed with Jeopardy okay. yeah, yeah. The, the, the the TV show Alex Trebek yeah, personal hero of mine uh, I was sitting there and my phone you know I was just have my phone in my pocket we're sitting there we're watching Jeopardy it's cool yeah and all of a sudden my pocket just bzz, 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 bzz. And I'm like oh no what's going on I pull out. And my wife knows because we've done it now. She knows. She's like, uh oh, you got to go, don't yeah. you? And I'm like, yeah, breaking stuff. I got to go. Cool. You know, uh, it's just par for course now. You know, when things break, it's it's exciting, it's invigorating, it's like, ee. And then right. you go and you sit and you watch all the social media and you wait. It's like, okay. <laughs> and then you can pull up Google Analytics and you can see oh. how many people are on the page and you see it going up and you're like, yeah, here we go. And we're all on Slack going, yeah, scoop, yeah. <laughs> High five. Yeah, right. It's right. exactly how it works. And, and, and that's, that's the thing is it shows that level of passion that we all have of how excited we are that not just did we break the news, right. but there are, there's news to break. Exactly. That's the important piece is that – and we get to put this news out for the public, out for our audience to be able to share in that enthusiasm. Because now people are reading the article and they're at home going, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. It's, it's good stuff. It's amazing stuff. <laughs> and it's so cool because we're all so enthusiastic about it. Yes. Right? We're like so passionate. Uh -huh. And to have this news, like, I don't know, Rift S or what coming out. And then people are also excited. And then to break it first, it's it feels good. Like, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. So also with me, with the YouTubers, there are also other VR YouTubers, obviously. right? Yes. Yeah. But the same with you and Ben. Like, we all know each other. We respect mm -hmm. each other. But it feels amazing to break something first. It does. <laughs> it, I'm not going to lie. It's, 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 like, it's just like it's fun. It's, it's good. Right. You know, it's like, you know, you're playing Little League <laughs> Baseball or something and you go up and you strike out. But your buddy hit a home run. <laughs> yeah. 
good for you. Right. <laughs> no, no, exactly. So, but it's cool that we are all treating each other with respect yes. and we're all in the same boat. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Absolutely. It's really cool. And uh, yeah, and um, also the viewers, I think they also enjoy it and the listeners that we all in this industry are working together. I mm -hmm. mean, that you take your time to speak with me like a YouTuber, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. cool. It's yeah. really amazing. Cool. So we've talked quite a lot now about upload, but now I want to get to know you better. Oh boy. Kyle okay. Riesenbeck. All right. So how did you become the chief editor of Upload, the whole way from your first time in a VR headset until this point in time. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> okay, uh, right? let's see. First time in a VR headset was in 1996. Wow. It was at uh, the Epcot Center in Disney World in, in Orlando, Florida. Okay. It was the uh, virtuality setup. And uh, have you ever seen the movie Hackers? Yes. Okay. So yes. there's there's a there's a point where uh, one of the characters is playing in a VR headset, mm -hmm. very unrealistically, I might add, but I'm not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> that's the head. That's the setup that I tried. You cool. know, it's very weird thing wrapped yeah, around me and the headset, and I think I paid like twenty bucks for eight minutes. <laughs> I played Dactyl Nightmare. Right. Which was the OG VR, like, you know, you shot little blocks at each other and mm -hmm. the, the, the graphics and the, uh, oh, just so bad, but I loved it so <laughs> much. You're right. I remember thinking to myself, well, it's just a matter of a couple more years. And this was 96. Right. It's just a matter of a couple more years and everybody <laughs> will have this all the time. And I was so excited for that. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. Um, yeah, you know, I, I grew up like most people in in this industry, obsessed with, um, you know, just doing things with technology that it wasn't meant to do, and uh, living through the eyes of Hollywood producers and directors of what future technology would look like, mm -hmm. and I just always wanted to live in one of those worlds. And here we are. Right, right. <laughs> um, I remember I was doing the Android stuff, and I had. Um, the, the HP touchpad was an Android tablet that came out. It, uh, it ran a very odd proprietary web OS setup, and uh, somebody had found a way to hack it and put Android on it. So I kind of made my name that way, is getting into all that and doing videos and tutorials for that. But at some point, it became very monotonous, boring. Mm -hmm. It's like you can push a button out of a rooted device. It's like, well, this, <laughs> there's no fun in that. You know, I, I want to get my Linux laptop out and I want to plug it in and go in and get root and all that stuff. I, you, you didn't have to do that anymore. People had automated the process, so I got bored. I was at work one day working in a cubicle farm doing tech support for some legal research software. All right. And uh, Buddy sent me a message. He's like, hey, did you see this thing? What is this? It's like, I don't know. What, uh, Oculus. Kickstarter. What? What is this? Right. And so I started watching it, watching it, watching it. And then they, you know, it successful, very successful. And I started reading about it. Joined the Oculus subreddit. Started going to other sites and reading about it and talking to people. I, I just, I, I was like, I remember I went home one day. I, I showed it to my wife. I said, "This is my next thing. <laughs> this is going to be my next thing." The VR thing. So yeah. So I think it was like August twenty third. I got the DK1, came in the mail. I went home sick early that day. <coughs> I'm sick. I had to go home. No, and then later you really got sick because you tried the DK1. Well, <laughs> actually, that's not too far from the truth. Uh, okay. Loaded up DK1, did the, the, the Rift Coaster, and did a couple other things. And then I took it off. <laughs> and I went over, and I laid down on the couch, and I took a three-hour nap. <laughs> I had done I had sucks. 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> And that was it. It had been <laughs> yeah. my first time. Yeah, and, of course. You know, and the DK1 was like very uh, sickness inducing. It was thing. really crazy. And uh, and then from there, just it, it just grew and festered in my brain. And wanted. I just kept wanting to do more and more. And, you know, I, I started developing. I, I developed a couple titles and did some stuff. And, yeah, oh, man, mm. it just it just stayed exciting. As right. More stuff kept coming out, just got better and better. You know, and, and the community grew, and I met the community of people, and you know things like the you know Silicon Valley virtual reality meetup group uh, and in the expo and, and all that. I mean that that was big. 
Mm-hmm. When that SVBR Expo, uh, what was that, 2014, that was big. That you was, were directly part of it from the very beginning. Oh, that was huge. And I remember, I can't remember who said it. Actually, I think I do. Somebody said to me, they're like, you'll be happy you were here because mm-hmm. it'll never be like this ever again. Wow. And at, at the time, I was like, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, oh, wow. Yeah. That, it was true. Big it's change so to now. true. Oh, yeah. I mean, so many people are involved in it now. Things have got, you know, there's bickering back and forth about which is the better headset and which is the better platform. And we, you know how lucky we are mm-hmm. to be able to have that type of argument? Right. Because in 2014, you had one option. Right. That was it. Exactly. You either liked it or you didn't. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it just, it, it's, I look back at it and I, it, it feels ridiculous that it's been over five years worth mm-hmm. of doing this. Mm-hmm. And, right. you know, prior to, prior to that, it, what was my life like? I can't even remember <laughs> a world without VR now. It's wow. strange. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But a brush said, well, this is still the early years. The yes. early days of the VR. good old what, what, days. Yeah, exactly. The good old you, days. Would you say that it's now still the good old days? Or is it already like, I feel it's already like we're quite advanced already now. Or it's still the good old days? 2019. That is a <laughs> great question. Um, my definition my my measurement of success when a product has truly gone mainstream it's when grandma has one <laughs> right well, as soon as grandma i remember when my grandma got a, a, a touch phone a smartphone mm-hmm. a touch screen i went that's definitely mainstream okay. now. we're mainstream now yeah that's it <laughs> grandma's liking things on facebook that's mainstream right when grandma has and i'm saying grandma it's just when that generation has right. adopted a technology it's very much mainstream and so good old days i think will stop when grandma <laughs> buys a vr headset wow. when, when mainstream adoption kills the good old days puts them to bed, says, okay, here's the end point, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, people will disagree with that. Actually, I'm kind of curious about, because I've not had anybody ask me that question before, of when do the good old days end? And for me, I think it's when mainstream adoption occurs. Right. So when our mother's going to have that new headset and I'm going to tell us and show the grandkids, hey, I bought this thing, Mm -hmm. it's over. That's it. (laughs) Then the the good old days are over. They're done. (laughs) They're gone. Very. I think it's a great answer. So 2014, you were in that scene. Everything started, Mm -hmm. SVBR, and you were there from day one. Yep. And you had the DK1. And um, yeah, tell us a bit more how things went from that point. Okay. Okay. so somewhere along the line, somebody said meetups are where it's at. Okay. And, you know, I had heard about meetups, but I hadn't actually been to any. And going to the SVVR Expo um, and knowing that that grew from a meetup, I was like, hmm. And so I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati had some, not, not a lot of tech stuff, but there was some educational things. And um, Miami... Oxford, the uh, University of Miami in Oxford, Ohio, had a, uh, a virtual reality, like a lab. And there was uh, a professor there, uh, Professor Eric Hodgson. Hello, Doc. Uh, <laughs> he reached out to me. He's like, man, you got to come play in my lab. And I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> Sounds good. He had every toy imaginable, everything. He even had a cave. A cave system is, uh, it's six or nine or whatever panels that, and they're projected from behind. This is a big oh, million no dollars. Oh, no kidding. Oh, yeah. Oh, no kidding. This. Th- oh, oh, yeah. No. Oh, oh, yeah. That is cool. Oh, yeah. And he's like, you know, check it out. And you put on polarized glasses and you step in. They have like, Yeah. And you walk in and then you just take a controller and you can fly around the world. And it's VR without it being on your head right but it's expensive and bulky and last generation kind of stuff but he had oh tracking suits and old headsets and he showed me these huge like controlled walking experiences in a 
they had an OptiTrack system wrapped around inside okay. a gymnasium, and right. he's like putting this big backpack on. <laughs> uh, there's a video yeah. actually of all of me doing. Yeah, oh yeah, oh Amazing. yeah. It's really cool Amazing, stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, on my YouTube channel, there's there's video of mm. me playing around in uh, my my cool VR adventure, and uh, yeah. So we decided to make a meetup. Cool. Yeah, Professor Eric and I nice. were like, let's team up, and make a meetup. Right. You know, and uh, we we called it the Cincinnati Dayton VR meetup because where the where the school's located, it's kind of equidistant between Cincinnati and Dayton, two big cities. Well, big cities. Uh, it, we 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 did the meetup. It was uh, a, I thought it was a good success. Um, it, it felt nice to know that there were people locally who were passionate about I mean, people were coming down from michigan i mean driving hundreds of miles to come to this meetup mm -hmm. and uh we did a couple and it was good and then when i left cincinnati somebody else picked up the reins mm -hmm. and took off and they still do it and cool. uh so I, I feel nice it feels nice to know that that exists and right. then uh, when i moved out to seattle um uh, again a group of people said hey we should do a real legit meetup now that you're mm -hmm. here let's do a le and so i helped start that and that's kind of run on its own too i mean it, meetups are important finding like-minded people who are passionate about this technology is important mm -hmm. uh and so you know that, that that's kind of how i got to that point um when i left uh, the, the company I was looking working for a legal company uh, in in Cincinnati when I left them and moved out to Seattle I had gotten a, a job doing architectural visualization in VR so mm -hmm. I was just deving and I did that for a couple of years and then switched over to another company and then they got bought so I found myself mm -hmm. you know out of a out of job and so you know started just putting feelers out different people and different things and that's kind of how i ended up at, at upload cool yeah cool and uh, <laughs> on on the way you did the podcast before that or oh, when did you start with the podcast the rev vr podcast so the rev vr podcast started uh, approximately august ish of 2013 2013 uh, yeah wow yeah okay yeah. definitely I one of the first if not the first I might podcast. be wrong on that date. I don't yeah. know. But I, very, very early. Yeah, very early. Very wow. early on. Um, and, you know, had five or six people listening. That was yeah, it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and then there was 10. Then yeah. there was 20. Right. Then there was 200. I was cool. like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it works. So I tried, I tried to branch out. Uh, there was a really amazing piece of software out there in the early days. It was called Rift Max Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, made by some very talented people who are mm -hmm. still in the industry today making amazing stuff. Uh, Rift Max was my home away from home. Mm -hmm. It was my virtual home away from home. Mm -hmm. I would spend hours, wow. six and a half hours at one point in a DK2 mm -hmm. in Rift Max. <laughs> I've actually woken up. I had fallen asleep in my, in my chair <laughs> in a Rift Max theater. Wow. And then woke up. And it's. And have you ever woken up in VR? Not yet. Not yet. I, I <laughs> highly encourage you to do it because <laughs> okay, you, I'll try it. you wake up. And first of all, I was sitting in a chair in a virtual theater. Nothing on the screen. Lights are dim. And I remember just kind of uh, waking <laughs> up. And I, I, as I open my eyes, I'm looking around like, where am I? Like, I, uh, it took me a split That's amazing, man. second. A split second. To realize, oh, I have my headset on. <laughs> that is so cool. I love that. That I is really love cool. That. Yes. So I highly recommend doing that if you can. Um, I, I I did talk show. Mm -hmm. I did talk shows in VR as an avatar with wow. a stage. We even had a band. We had the NPC band. Man, you were ahead yeah. of your time. It was like it was like the like Jimmy Fallon in VR. Man, you're really out of your time. I mean, it's happening again <laughs> I, now. It's it gonna, is. It's going to be it more is. popular in the future. Yeah. I was thinking about something like this too. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I yeah. think you're ahead of your time for a couple of years there. The, the, <laughs> the challenge the challenge with that format is two things. Number one, if you have a virtual audience, you kind of have to keep them wrangled because right. what stops them from everything. jumping. Yeah, so there was a lot of controls that had to right. be put in. Second thing is uh, if you're doing something live and you're doing it at, 3 p.m. Eastern time, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily a great time for everybody else, you know, okay. and, and we're our global community. Right. No. Yeah. So we struggled with that. Also, um, lining up interviews and keeping the content fresh. I mean, we really tried hard yeah, to keep things fresh. And yeah, so we only did a couple episodes. We killed that. 
And then another show came on, Gunter's Universe, which mm -hmm. Gunter is still around doing Gunter's Universe, big part in VR chat. He started in Rift Max, moved over to VR chat. Um, pretty proud of him. Gunter's a great guy, does a lot of good stuff for the community. Uh, great show, you know, if, if you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. We tried another one. I, I did one that was called Feedback mm -hmm. and uh, kind of a more of a like the view. People just chilling on couches. Okay. Yeah, had right. a little TV we could show videos and stuff. Okay. Again, did about six or seven episodes. I think it was too ahead of its time. Okay. I think that kind of thing, because I see things like like high fidelity and alt space and VR chat and you know Sansar. They do stuff like that now and get big crowds, but right. there's more people with the headsets and the interest in doing so. Mm -hmm. Now would be a good time to for somebody it. to do. Yeah, and then and then it's like, oh, well, maybe you should do another show. I don't know. I, we, you might see something All right. down the road. On Upload VR, probably. Maybe. Maybe. Uh -huh. Something cool. <laughs> okay, we can be excited about that one. Amazing. So... I believe that you got so many connections in VR because you did all these grassroots things, right? Yeah. Like you met all the people, you Lots did the podcast, mm -hmm. had, the, had, had uh, the audience. And I believe, I believe that kind of helped you to get this position, right? Is it, is it that um, or? Hmm. The I don't know. I mean, you know, the street cred get you a job? I don't know. It I mean, can help. The I, connections will for sure help, I, right? I, I, think, I think what was important <laughs> is, is the fact that they wanted they wanted me because I understood the industry. Right. And that, right. that was important because you can find th – there's a lot of different ways to put somebody in a job. You can put somebody in, in, in a role and say, this person has proven themselves a track record of being successful in this industry, doing this job over here. But what about in this industry? Can right. they do that? Some people succeed. Other people don't. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, Putting me in a role where I have previous management experience, uh, previous, uh, you know, the just being part of the community and talking to the people and understanding what the community wants and things like that, that I think primed me mm -hmm. for this role. You cool. know, I would have never have looked for this had I not been reaching out and just throwing my... Because I didn't actually know what I wanted to do next. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I wanted to be more dev, that I want to get into, you know... You know public relations, social media. I, I, I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know. I definitely didn't want to just focus uh, solely on creating my own content and try to live off of YouTube revenue. It's very <laughs> it unstable. Doesn't really work. It doesn't work. At the moment in VR, yeah. no. It's here's tough. here's <laughs> my first Google check for $300. <laughs> yes, <go>. party. <laughs> I'm quitting my job. Yeah, no. no, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work, it doesn't work that no. way. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, but um, how do you feel now in that position? Is it exactly the thing that you want to do? I, 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 right now, it feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. It feels really good. It feels like it's a place where I can definitely have the biggest impact on the industry and help promote the industry and put it in a place where, you know, I want, because I'm a fan as much as I am journalist or uh, you know a, a public you know a public figure influencer whatever that mm -hmm. word I don't know what all those words mean but mm -hmm. I do know that I'm a fan mm -hmm. and I do yeah. know that if I can do things to make the VR industry grow and move forward then that's what I want to do and right now that's what I'm doing, doing it. with upload and it, it feels really good to know that we've got this good strong team you know I, I always think of uh, um, you know, Ron Burgundy coming out, you know, with all of his teammates. <laughs> yeah, and it's right. like, you know, somebody's got the cowboy <laughs> hat on. And it, it, it's just, it's, it's kind of fun. It, it it's, it's a lot of fun. And, um, you know, just, just like a lot of indie devs out there, it's like just, just ride the tide mm -hmm. and see where it takes you. And hopefully it's in a good spot where you land. Super exciting times right now. Yes, it is. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. We're, we are reaching the, the one hour mark oh, okay. very soon and um, at the, getting to the end of this show. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask you now at the end, what excites you right now in the VR and XR space? I mean, you see everything, right? So what do you think? Yeah. Like, okay, this thing is friggin' amazing or this excites me, me personally. I want to yeah. try that. I want to do that. Um, somebody asked me what would the ultimate headset look like? Mm -hmm. 
and being a, dis- a bespectacled individual, I've worn glasses. I think I was born with a pair of glasses. I'll have to ask my mom that one. Uh, I've worn glasses my whole life. And I want, the first thing I do in the morning is I look over and I grab my glasses and I put them on. And then the second thing I do is grab my phone. Uh, <laughs> right. I, I would love to be able to wake up in the morning and put a pair of glasses on and then not grab my phone. I can just mm-hmm. tap the side, tell it to, you know, read me the news, do this, do that, you know. Hey Google, what's the weather like today? And, you know, I, somebody's listening to this podcast right now yeah. and their Google Home Mini just popped up and told them what the weather was. Exactly. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I, I I want that. And so when I see headsets that are getting you know, especially a lot of the AR stuff where like, like Unreal and things like right. that. And I'm really excited to see if like, you know, Apple gets into the game. Mm-hmm. I want a consumer product that I can, that I wouldn't feel uncomfortable wearing to church. Okay. I cool. mean that, that right there. And so when I see things that are coming out that are very inconspicuous, mm-hmm. it doesn't look like I'm about to go into battle. You know, right. I'm not a Halo character. <laughs> it's just a, pair of glasses yeah you know even the doc brown back to the future 2 right. visor i'd be good with that cool amazing answer and uh i feel the same for myself if we had this thing we just put it on mm-hmm. and we see stuff yeah <laughs> we would cover it on our channel for sure be beautiful <laughs> yeah yeah and uh yeah that would be amazing and i think it's gonna happen what do you think when is it gonna happen that you have this device oh man 2024 Okay, twenty so five years, <laughs> five years. We're gonna sit here with these things on. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I, I I had somebody much smarter than me tell me once, like you can predict five years ahead. Anything more than that, you're just guessing. <laughs> right. it's, it, who the heck knows? Um, yeah, I, I I think 2020 will be big. I mean, just because of the whole 2020 vision. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, who doesn't think about that in the space and go, oh, 2020, it's all about mm-hmm. you know vision. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, I think I think what what I'm looking for will be five years out from from now. All right, yeah. cool, Kyle. Thank you so much for your time. It no has problem. been an amazing podcast session with you. And finally, you were the guest of a podcast. That's right. Yeah, it was I, amazing. I like being on this side of yeah, the table. Yeah, it's cool, okay. right? Yeah. Kyle, thank you so much <laughs> yeah. for your time. No problem. This has been an amazing episode of the People in XR podcast. And, well, we hope that you enjoyed it. And, of course, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. That's what we like to do here on YouTube. And for the podcast listeners, why don't you write a review about this show on your podcast provider it would help people in XR a lot. Thank you so much for being here and thank you so, so much for listening. And that's it. I'm looking forward to see you and hear you. Or you're going to hear me in the next episode. Bye-bye. See ya. See ya.